I see. You found our little hiding spot in the universe. Don't get too comfortable. This is a place where you will find those with an experience that's out of this world. Or possibly deep within your life. I welcome you to the Oracles with James Tyson. Lean forward and listen. We will pull you into a supernatural journey with guests from around the world, each one experiencing some of the most extraordinary phenomena this wee plant has to offer. Now, here are the Oracles with James Tyson. Thank you, Liam, my funny little alien friend. And thank you, listener, and now viewer, for tuning in to this episode of The Oracles with James Tyson. It's me, James. And today I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Charlene. She's known as the Reflective Perspective Oracle on Instagram. And she's made her own Oracle card deck. So we're going to be talking about her deck, how it became something she was interested in, where her path has been taking her, and basically how to make your own deck. Well, I shouldn't say how to make your own deck. It's more how she made her deck and why. And then you can pick up on it from there. Now, Oracle cards are, they're not, they're not tarot cards. Tarots are like your set 78 cards. Um, one isn't better than the other. I don't do well with tarot cards primarily because tarot cards have a lot of rules. And if you know me, I'm not big into that many rules. But I like the Oracle cards. And Oracle cards can be anywhere from 20 to 144, depending on the person who's making the deck and what they perceive you want to use them for. They are a tool for self-reflection, um, also called divination cards. Uh, something to open that side up and maybe give you a focus uh, as a reader, as somebody who actually is looking and flipping through the cards. I found it was really just a focus point. Because as I tell Charlene, and you know from being a, a listener anyway, um, that I've actually read the backs of white business cards. And I found that I could do it because it was just something I was focusing on and got a message. Now, of course, like my varying oracle cards, these are just fractal images. And this image may mean something to you. Uh, or if I'm doing your reading, it, it may provide me with some insight into something I'm supposed to tell you, but I could bring the exact same card up to somebody else and it'll be a complete different message. And my other Oracle cards are Archangel Michael. So there's a lot of writing on them. So they actually do have a bit of a story and I can, you, know, you read the standard little paragraph, the Michael card, and I, if I read it two or three times, I get kind of like, oh, that's what he's trying to say. But when I first got these cards, it was, it was too complicated because left brain male, I just looked at the picture and thought, oh, a picture. But uh, these things, a lot of fun with these. Um, or should I say fun? A lot of um, learning and growth uh, doing readings with these. And uh, those cards, again, is just a focus for me. Uh, Charlene is toning and honing and tuning her, um, tuning and, and honing is toning, I guess, uh, her own abilities to read. And she, she does do readings. So again, if you get a hold of her and I'll, I'll kind of bounce through her website's not up and running at this point, but, uh, behind me here is, uh, is what her page on Instagram looks like. She is i can't remember how many followers she has she's got a uh, 111 followers let's try to get that up okay um i'm pretty sure she's not aiming at the 3.5 million uh instagram followers and become a smoke spokes model for something but if if you knew charlene yeah she could probably do it um <laughs> the, but she's just trying to get the word out there to help and to help look at you. Again, her cards are reflective. And what's really interesting about her cards, and I'm gonna to have to pull this up again and read it if I can, uh, reflective perspective oracles. But uh, it's, her, her cards are, oh, what is it? The mystical, magical, reflective, it, and she'll, we'll get into that. Because um, I criticize her about 
using a lot of words on her cards, but she does. And she'll, she gets into what each little saying on the cards mean and what the diagram means. Um, Oracle cards come with a rule book. I shouldn't say a rule book, a book, a guidebook, a guidebook. And when I was first told, when I first showed somebody this deck, um, uh, Catherine uh, Fallman, who is a reader out in this part of the world, who also uses this, the same deck. Um, and I'll be darned if I remember the name of the deck, but um, the, she used the deck and she said, oh, first thing you do, you take out your, um, your little guidebook there and you throw it away and then off you go. Um, that's, that was pretty hard to say or hard to take from her, but it meant more later once I started reading the cards, especially these ones, because they all come with, you know, this card means this. Um, what I found then was with an Oracle card is if I was given a, this is what this card means. I was trying to get that square peg into the round hole of the impression that I was getting. So I was trying to fit whatever I was getting into what the card said, or I was supposed to see. When I threw away the card, I was only getting the information and all I, I learned to be comfortable and confident in actually saying it out loud. Like, oh, you're, you know, you're getting a new dog next week kind of thing. It, it, like it the silliest thought would come to my head, but I had to be confident in saying it out loud because it meant something to the person I was talking to or reading the cards for. So we get into that. We, we do get into that, to that with Charlene and Charlene is coming shortly. When she gets here, I will take off my hat because I would be rude to be in a room with a lady with my hat on. So go grab Charlene and uh, we'll get right into this. Charlene, who is the Reflective Perspective Oracle. I have to read that all, all the time because everything she does, it seems to be a tongue twister. Charlene will be right in. Hey Charlene, thanks for dropping by. <laughs> We're laughing because we've actually done this interview basically for an hour at one other time and didn't record. We started again after a dinner break and five minutes into it went, oh, it's not recording again. So third time's a charm. Third time. This is it. Charlene, who is also, if you go onto Instagram, go to Reflective Perspective Oracle. Uh, repl re Reflective Perspective Oracle, because it's so easy, just rolls off the tongue. And you'll see all of her, her really cool Oracle card stuff, and which is one of the main reasons she's here. Mm -hmm. um, but a little bit of a background on who Charlene is. We've known each other for about six years, which we determined in the first interview. <laughs> and the second. And the second. <laughs> and uh, one of the things is, is that back in the day, Skeeter Wellhouse, like six years ago, said I was going to bump into three people that were like sisters, but not related and that uh, they didn't always get along. It was kind of a jump, but they were kind of this core group, like the, these three people at this most likely same location. And kind of being me, goes in one ear and out the other, and it's like, yeah, okay, fine. And this was supposed to be something that was gonna help me on my intuitive path, open some doors, as well as like help out these three people. Help, I don't know how it would have helped. It was just it was supposed to meet them, but, uh, I was supposed to meet up with a friend who worked at a club in Vancouver. We had set up time. Okay, I'll come down and see you and get down there. And she wasn't there, but her two friends were. This is one of them, Charlene. And uh, <laughs> another one, Lucy, who is actually now my tenant who lives in the house. She, uh, when I first met Charlene, she, I could describe her as being sparkly, like very kinetic energy and all of them were intuitive on their own levels and their own uses for the energies they had. It was very, very obvious that these two people and my other friend were the three people I was supposed to bump into. So things go on. We have conversations. You came on my old show that was a, uh, had a live uh, show on the internet and we had a episode called two mediums and a large you I was came to say on two large and a medium, two large and a medium. <laughs> no two mediums and a large <laughs> and um charlene came on and got a reading from skeeter which was kind of cool and or is it joanna both both oh yeah because they were both they yes. were the two mediums yes. and i was 
Anyway, the um, <laughs> <laughs> two mediums, and two mediums, and the large yeah. guy. Anyway, you got your readings, yes. and from there you kind of opened those doors you had closed when you were younger. You kind of opened them up and went, "Oh, I can see things, and I'm going to shut these doors until later." And then, yeah, I mean, I I don't really ever recall. I always knew there was something um, mm -hmm. special. I, I'm not saying special about me, but special about I don't know life the world the way it works there's some sort of magic I guess I felt like there was something you know but I didn't quite know what it was so it wasn't until I you know my late teens early 20s when I started kind of going down that path and meeting people like this and then you know cards and and readers and and palm readers and tea leaf readers and things of this nature so um that was one of the main first readings I had ever had and it was quite jarring. I mean, I still have it saved to this day. And it's funny to go back and listen, like just the ascension I've taken since then. And I'd say that was probably five years ago, maybe long. Yeah. It would have been five, five, five and a half because yeah. If we, yeah, it could be longer. I mean, we could be completely wrong. Like how long? Well, no, I, I had that show in 2014 okay. is when I started. So then that makes sense. So it was after that. So six years. Yeah. Yeah. So in that six year span, I have, um, blossom exponentially in my spiritual understanding and um so here we sit you have blossomed as you said but you've actually continued almost like to open like why well, which is what i guess a blossoming a blossoming is mm. um but you've gone into a number of different modalities mm -hmm. you've um you know you you meditate and you've you've actually researched things you're going out digging into things and a lot of those were to do with readings and uh, oh, definitely a seeker always a seeker yeah since i was little and in your readings did you ever have a, a truly bad experience you, you mean readings i received that you received not yeah um i think if i did feel like it was bad it was only like uh it was only like in that moment like it wasn't like oh doom and gloom and you're gonna okay yeah it was never anything like this it was like if, if anything what always seemed bad to me was that something would take a long time i'm an aries i want everything yesterday and so <laughs> it was like you're not gonna get here for another eight years or you're not gonna meet your person for another 10 years or what have you and that used to drive me insane but now i understand it so <laughs> those were the bad parts of readings for me now and you know, we talked about this before. In fact, just in the other interview that you haven't seen, the, um, <laughs> you will never but you've, see. you've never, you've never actually had a reader who was um, a corrupt reader. We'll call it a no. reader that was trying to scam you out of stuff like no, that. No, I think I've always been protected, and I've always been drawn to the right people. If anything, back then, I feel like the people I was drawn to were not only just to help me on my path at that point in time, but also to show me that, like, uh, to to awaken my intuition to the sense that, you know, that this kind of connection, this energy does exist. Yes. And so incrementally yeah. over all these years, it all added up to the faith and the intuition that I now hold, if that makes sense. Oh, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. But what the reason, one of the reasons, the main reason I'm asking you this is that um, over the last few months on social media, there's been an, uh, an upswing in fake, mm -hmm. um, psychic readers uh fake mediums make fake psychics and i was approached by one on social media it was on facebook where they get a hold of you saying you know would you like a reading after sending you a friend request and got back to them saying no i'm i'm good i'm i'm read out i'm i'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm good that way yeah and uh, then they come back saying oh but it, we have a very important message for you yeah well that's a that's a bait and hook oh that, absolutely that's, when you hear when you ever hear something like that from a stranger it's all about money. It's got nothing to do with you. It's very predatory. And I, I personally believe that, well, out of all the readers I know, nobody would ever ex overextend themselves to the point of, unless that person is asking, like say, yeah. for example, you're asking, and then I would offer such a thing to you. Yeah. Not like, hey, 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 you know? And if I did, it would be completely like free, you know? Because oh, yeah, it would you... be like me saying, hey, let me help you out. You know, it's not like, I'm looking for a quick buck. Well, yeah, it's, it's like the kind of readings that I do where I, I look at somebody and see somebody standing right. beside them.
they only come through. They're always there, but they only come through to me if they are something to pass on. Absolutely. So it's assistance. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes I have a hard time determining how I'm going to say that to the right. person. Like, hey, well, I told you about this one story where a woman was coming down a set of stairs and I was going up them and the, oh, yes, her yes. grandmother came through like, you've got to tell my granddaughter, blah, blah, blah. And I just looked at her and said, this is going to sound a little weird. But your grandmother is standing right behind the girl. Screamed and went running up the stairs. I never saw her again. I went, okay. Um, note to self: Do not approach people like that. Which is really interesting because I always had this theory that I don't see ghosts. Like these people I see aren't. Well, they're dead, but they're not. They've crossed over. Yes. They've done all the work. They've they they know all the answers. <laughs> And they're helping the person as, as a bit of a medium between them and their spirit guides and passing on information. Well, but, when people die, they don't die. They're physical vessel. Yeah. Yes. But, right, right. Yeah. But these, <laughs> the, this person isn't somebody who hasn't crossed over. Right. right? What we I call ghosts. These are spirits. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I, I, I assume that, well, this person already knows that this is a good idea for me to talk to their loved one. <laughs> right, not so they wouldn't have just come through because they know this would have gone sideways. Yeah. And I guess it's all in the, the way I, I ask or, yeah. or, or articulate or approach the situation, right? I didn't do well there. But I think if that person, the spirit, let's say, yeah, if they're coming through, then maybe there's something that they are aware of that needs to awaken this person that you're approaching on their path, like make them aware of this, make them, you know, show yeah. them this side, like kind of lead them down this sort of let them know there's this energy is, is maybe they're ready for that. <laughs> maybe, right? maybe that's the only thing I was supposed to do. Exactly. And when the person freaked out, ran up the stairs, maybe that was, that was my here, go, go freak out my granddaughter. Well, that it's or like, it could have been enough. You have, yeah. you have no idea the, the repercussions of that. No, the ripple that goes yeah, up from exactly. there. Absolutely. Interesting. Absolutely. Now, how long have you been that way inclined? Well, be more specific. <laughs> uh, what is the capital of Ecuador? No. Uh, how long have you had? How long have you felt you have been intuitive that you have had something around you? Well, it isn't it? It isn't actually until just recently that I realized that if I look back, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's something that I realized that I've actually had since I was little, and I think everybody has it. I truly believe everybody has it. Um, it's just whether or not you're willing to a notice it, b wake up to it and c believe it, you know, like to actually have faith in it. And what it is, is a gut feeling, call it your intuition, call it your gut, call it your sixth sense. I mean, there's a million ways we could call it, but, um, it's there, it's, it's within everyone. And I think it's all those times when I would, and that's the thing is that it, it hits everybody individually. Everybody has it, but it hits everybody individually. So for example, to, for me, it's like a feeling. It's this undeniable feeling about something or um, I'll have like a little image in my mind when someone's speaking or I'll hear a song that like I did not hear during the day. I'm around someone and they're dealing with something and I hear these lyrics and I tell them and then it's completely relevant, that kind of thing. So, okay, yeah. I, I didn't realize mine until 2012 when it was pointed out to me. Mm. And then again, in hindsight, you go back like, oh yeah. That's you, what that was. I've That's what that was. And, and the thing is, is that, I don't know about, for women, I think maybe everybody, but like, yeah, let's mm -hmm. say everybody. But sometimes I've been in relationships in the past where I've been in a situation where I could feel something about my partner or even a friendship, what have you. And that other person says to you, oh no, you're crazy. But then the whole time you were right. And it was because you could feel it. You knew like yeah. it was like an, an inner knowing and there's a, you can feel people, you know, like you, you mm -hmm. feel an energy, you understand it. It's, it doesn't sit right with you. you. Don't ignore that. Like don't ignore that. Well, don't ignore it, but be careful of it on, yeah. especially on public transit. Right. They don't like that. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey lady, um, <laughs> I feel something. And, uh, I was curious <laughs> if, uh, Hey, 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 put me down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Again, we always reflect. Uh, we reflect on our lives and try to determine where exactly the switch got turned on. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall. I just recall seeing shadows in my room when I was in my early teens, at twelve, like post puberty. Mm -hmm. And then I full on dead person when I was sixteen. 
And then I kind of went, eh, whatever. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, wrote that off. And As if to say, like, oh, I'm just crazy. I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's interesting because yeah, yeah. I was in a, like, and my listener knows I was in a car accident when I was 16, got to the hospital, and the driver of the other vehicle was being led out of the back of the ambulance. I was riding up front because I really wasn't hurt at all. And the he was being led away by the nurses, and his son was there, and his son looked fine. Mm. And then I asked my mom, did anyone get hurt really bad? And they said, well, the little boy died. Oh. And I looked at them and said, well, he looked fine when I saw him. Yeah. He must have had internal injuries. And they just stared at me because he died in the car. So he, and I described him like head to toe. He was like, and I was looking right at him. I was right. watching him. Right. And he, his dad was shaken up and he looked fine. Years later, I actually, because it was over 25 years ago, I could go on the provincial website and actually pull up his certificate of death. Right. Where it was like DOA. You can see. Yeah, yeah he was, and it showed all wow. the injuries in a way. Yep, confirmed. That was a ghost. I have a question for you. Yes. Would you or would you not say that the, let's call it the awakening process, like so to coming to the understanding of what your your connection was came did it not come from some sort of a dark period in your life or some sort of tumultuous kind of because that's how it was for me like it all stemmed from something very like you know difficult and dark happening within my life to then therefore wake me up uh lead me through a process of meditation and so forth and then that's kind of what woke me up like not for me i was no? the shadows i saw in my room were the typical waking up between three and four thirty in the morning and mm. there's someone standing at the foot of your bed walking across the bed and then up beside you. Right. And it was a little girl just from her shape. Well, this is touching back on what we said in the first interview <laughs> about how each person has different gifts and each per it, it'll pronounce itself through each person in a different way. And yeah. I, and we were talking about how, um, you'll only be presented with what you are able to handle. Like as if to say spirit sort of knows your personality and what you can fathom, what you can take on. Like you will never be given more than you can handle. So for example, if it was me, if it's coming through me, it's, it's mostly like, as I said earlier, um, you know, images of butterflies and, and, and yep. lady bee, uh, ladybugs and, and happy things that are very positive and like things that I've seen a lot in my life that I can understand. Whereas they would never come to me with something that was a little more obscure or dark or, or, you know, quote unquote, like spooky. Yeah. Because yeah. I personally am not one to be able to handle those. Like, it's not my flavor. So it's like, they know not to kind of shoot me with those sort of things. Whereas with you, you seem, your personality is more geared to that. You're very interested in that kind of thing. Right. Well, it, it's interesting you say that because I had the ability, well, I shouldn't say I had the ability. I saw a dead person when I was 16. Like actual or like, like, like this was a kid. I'm, we're talking about a ghost. A ghost. Okay, like sorry. full on Just walking out of the car. Yeah. Be clear. clear. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 and again, in hindsight, mm. our, our fancy filter, the, the shadow in my room or the shadows in my room, mm. I reached out to the one walking beside my bed. I re remember it clearly because of what my mother told me the next day. I reached out thinking it was my sister, put my hand in it and then mm. just fell asleep. Right. Told my mother and she, and she didn't even look at me. She was just working in the kitchen doing some of the dishes. And she said, Oh, sometimes that happens. I was like, that's your answer. Because I didn't know at the time my mother had those. Mm. That's the side of the family. I get Now Was she strong. aware or was she just saying that as like a, that Oh, that's a normal part of life. That's, like it, it was always in her life. Oh, okay. So, so she was aware. Yeah, she was aware. Right. I did. I didn't know what that meant right. and she never told me uh, so years later so maybe you know five years later i'm in a car accident at 16 see it see no full-on apparition so that as far as i know doesn't happen again for like for ever long time yeah so i am well actually i just say forever but so I'm going to, I'm going to be a Mountie. I go in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and I'm out and I'm seeing dead people. Right. Physical, real. Physical, like dead people. 3D. I don't see anything, <laughs> anything. spooky yeah. at all. Uh, other than very one car accident, I pulled up and it was just like two cars off the side of the road. Didn't appear to be a big, big deal car accident. There was a woman standing at the door of the car, looking into the car. Mm. And I pulled up, got on the radio, said where I was, what I was going to get out, 
grabbed my gear, put the car in park, turned off the ignition, walked up, and I'm looking now, and the lady's gone. So, gee, okay. where's my witness? Right. So walk up, and I look into the car, and she's sitting in the car, and she's dead. Right. So what I saw was her standing outside the car, looking in the car. Her own body kind of staring. Yeah. Like and then, and then coming to the realization yeah, that she's. And then she pff, gone. Right, right. So that's the only time. But I look back and like you said, spirit will not maybe allow you to see things that are going to really throw a monkey wrench into your right. life. It's not gonna, at that they, point. they don't try to freak you out. I don't yeah. think. So here I am going through a career of being around and, and it wasn't a whole career. Like I did out of 28 years, I was in uniform for seven okay. years, okay. seven or eight years. The rest was all plain clothes and organized crime, robbery, major crime kind of stuff. Brave soul. Drugs and stuff. Brave soul. Oh no, that's that's the easy stuff. The hard stuff is the traffic. Day and day. like not I didn't work traffic. I didn't work traffic. Uh, <laughs> but I have written tickets. I know. Um, but the, the uniform stuff is, is scarier because mm. you had to go to all these places first. And mm. it was and it used to be funny. I used to, you know, we you know be uh throwing jokes back and forth through the firefighters those mattress packs anyway they they'd be saying they <laughs> one of the firemen looked at me and said you know you're pretty brave you know guys in the house with a gun you have to go in and if there's a fire like i can i have to go in i said dude you, if the house is on fire you go into it if guys in the house with a gun i can wait outside yeah <laughs> like yeah i'm not i'm not going in if he's got a gun Oh, God, you got, you got I, time. I got time. I got time. It's, uh, yeah, you have to go into the burning house. Now, if the guy with the house, the house is burning, he's got a gun, we're both screwed. But <laughs> the, uh, I'm not going to help you. But the, um, yeah, I, I didn't have to do anything ex extreme when I was working major crime. I right. dealt with a lot of victims. Right. And I mean that in both senses. We call them, in the amount of police, we call everybody we deal with as a client. Right. You're a client if you're the victim of a robbery. You're also a client if you're the robber. I see. So you're dealing with your clients. And my clients, a lot of times, were drug dependent and very low places in their own lives. Right. And the hindsight filter, the junkies, the drug dependent, and those with almost you know, some severe mental health challenges we're very high vibration people mm. and you know talking to some shamans and things these people had literally the monkey on their back this being this attachment that came out of them feeding on source energy mm -hmm. keeping them in addiction keeping it and until you re remove that uh, attachment uh, which which actually i've heard looks like a monkey and its face comes up here and it's got the face of a cat with red eyes, mm. but it's like the body of a monkey and it literally will hover around somebody. And when their vibration drops, they're a higher vibration person. Mm. Their vibration drops but due to trauma to. and they'll step in and they will just intercept source energy. Uh, I've heard this. And then keep that person in yeah. addiction. Right. Um, so Very you can take, vibrational. yeah, you get them into recovery. Right. They'll recover physically from the drug, mm. but with that thing on their back, they will relapse right. relatively quickly. Right. Anyway, again, that I wasn't experienced. Like I was experiencing those people at the time, not putting a name to it, not understanding it, but I did have that empathy to both the victim of the robbery and the robber. Right. So we were dealing with that. Now, if I was, completely turned on that intuitive switch was flipped right it would have been really hard yeah it would have been hard not only to see the the victims but it would have been really hard to see the offender the offender client because i would know that they're broken and i would know that this thing is an attachment right and it was years later where shamans had pointed that out right that this is how we have to deal with that you know i've taken photographs of ghosts mm. i've been around people who are, are ghost <laughs> magnets and literally will set up a camera and click it three or four times and ghosts look them walking around corners and we're all looking at them like why you and yeah it's just me it's wow. just they, they they come and play with me they feel safe in your presence yeah but whereas it, if i was to deal with that i think i'm Paso and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would freak yes, me like, yeah. like it would freak me out you know but if it comes to me through say for example a synchronicity right like um 
a song or a an image or I hear like a couple words on 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 the radio or like a billboard like mm -hmm. the messages come to me this way and that I can handle that's a filter like I like that I'm seeing an actual apparition I might have yeah, an issue with they're, that they're, for, um, for myself personally but the the apparitions that I <clears throat> I did see <clears throat> were um it was like they didn't see me I see the woman was looking in the car and the kid was with his dad walking away from me. As far as I was concerned, they were real people, which is, again, I wonder how many other people I saw like that, that I just assumed were real people from mm -hmm. a distance, mm -hmm. but I wasn't around. Like I would go to the sign uh, back in the, well, when I was in uniform in a small town, people would phone up and say, you know, I haven't heard from my uncle Fred for a while. And he's, uh, you know, I uh, wonder if you can go check on them. Right. So it was just, it was helping out. It was kind of a uh, check on well being of Uncle Fred. And you'd pull up, and a classic story I'm always, this first story it reminds me of is pulling up into this driveway in the summer, getting out of the car. It was like a little shack kind of house, but mm. the flies on the inside of the window were amazing. Yeah. So it comes a Vicks vapor rub up the nose. Ugh and open the door and walk in to find you know uncle fred dead mm -hmm. but there were times again the hindsight filter where i would talk to them like they were there right and there were times where i wouldn't right and it was pointed out to me it says yeah because you knew that they hadn't crossed over and they were still in the room right and i was explaining to them why i was going through their drawers and right. writing down the medication say, yeah. and taking photographs of where the body was because yeah. at the time we had medical examiners in that part of canada um so we weren't allowed to say somebody was dead but we could if there were enough evidence like <laughs> there was no head on the like a farm accident there was no head or something oh, okay he's dead yeah but you weren't really allowed supposed to say it you, you couldn't declare somebody dead you had to have body removal come or, right. or the ambulance come or and but if it was obviously he's been dead for a week or two get body removal to come over and they do the cleanup so you're doing all making these notes and you're you know writing everything down in the event that there looks something could be a little suspicious um 99 of these things weren't but you always took them as they would be suspicious mm -hmm. death and um and continue but i would explain why i was doing it to the dead person who was in this one case he had died of positional asphyxiation he was drunk and fell off the toilet against the wall and kind of passed out mm. but his body bent a certain way and asphyxiated right so i was talking to him because the door of the bathroom was open and i was in his bedroom and i was chatting away with the guy and all by myself right and then i were at other ones where it was just it was administration just right. admin right. writing it down waiting for the body removal guy and moving on and when i had that pointed out to me the light just went oh of course that's right. why right yeah because that is and knowing how i felt at the time actually having it pointed out it brought back all the memories going yes yeah, exactly how i felt i did not feel that he was dead right i will say that even though i've never physically seen like some sort of entity or spirit or anything apparition nothing like this i've definitely been in some situations in my life where i've felt like i have been physically protected in the way that i've been in an accident um say for example years ago uh, one of my best friends and i we were on a road trip alberta canada freezing ice you know terrible um someone slammed on their brakes in front of us on a highway this kind of thing and the car you know spinning right and we heard both of us to this day we heard this massive crash and we heard like the back of my truck completely smash like you know wow. and the next thing you know we're spinning the opposite direction we're in the ditch we're sideways i get out of the truck up to here in snow <laughs> <laughs> and uh not one scratch on the truck not one no car to be seen interesting it, it, it was as if we had been, you know, like divinely, like I, I, I can't to this day, I cannot. And, and there's other scenarios, but that was the most prevalent one where I know I've been very protected in my life. That's very much. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've, well, I can, the thing is I can go in all sorts of cool stories mm -hmm. about myself, but mm -hmm. I'm here to talk to you. Well, and, here I am. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you've, you've expanded in such a way that your meditation, um 
has developed to a point where it comes very easy for you. Yes, but it came from a very tumultuous time in my life. What was that? So I think I had gotten in a car accident, not the one I spoke of, but I got in a car accident. I, again, unharmed, I was, I was fine. But about six months after that, I started really experiencing a lot of uh, panic attacks, anxiety, that sort of thing. And the only thing that was ever suggested to me was medication and I wasn't really going down that road. But again, with panic and anxiety, I had started to feel so um, aware, a very heightened awareness of everything, how I felt, what I thought, being affected by everything. So I kind of just like, I wouldn't even drink coffee at the time. I just wanted to feel just flat out. I don't know, I guess you could say full on control of myself, if that makes sense. And then um, I did a lot of research because I was kind of at my wits end. And uh, I decided to um, start doing meditation. I mean, so many people spoke about it being scientifically proven that it can change your brain and it can change your life. And so a combination of that, um, going to the gym, you know, doing some spiritual work, like with an actual, like, uh, for lack of a better term, like a Reiki kind of healing sort of friend of mine, um, better eating habits, better sleeping habits, um, that kind of thing. And then I slowly changed the physiology of my brain. And that wasn't the only benefit. Not only did I bring myself to like a, a more calm, like, hum of, of a mindset. Um, I also started opening what I think is my intuition, your third eye, what have you. And it's just, it's been, the growth has been exponential. Absolutely. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. That is, that's uh, scary at first. It's, oh, it would be scary. Yeah. So the scary. Whole third eye thing. Yeah. Uh, I opened mine in a meditation and saw a whole bunch of things and including some I don't, Sanskrit kind of mm. writing, which I've written down. I actually have a, I wrote it down then photographed and it's in my phone, but I, it was, it was interesting. I saw cobblestone streets and thatched roofs and I flew down into this little town and was looking in the window at some people around this hearth and it was amazing. And I, I saw all sorts of other things that, and I can't, I've never opened that up again. Right. I've never gone back and had that meditation work as the way it did before. And I, it was I, one of those ones you pick up on YouTube where yeah. it's like, open your third eye. Yeah. And some of them are like, warning, don't do this. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, I have to do that one. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's the thing. I think for me, again, as we speak back to spirit source universe, they, they know what you can handle. Right. And so yeah. um, for me, I think they kind of spoon fed me over time, little bits of, wake her up, wake her up, wake her up slowly, but surely. And so that's kind of where, how it, how it worked for me. So. Well, it's good. You had the, the, the baby steps. Yeah. Oh, they knew I couldn't handle any more of the little baby steps. Yeah. 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 And like, you know, basically shutting me down to the point where I dead people weren't bothering me when I was a policeman for all those years. Mm. And then after that in 2012 and then on, I was photographing them and seeing a little bit more shadows moving and, hearing voices and things like that. Uh, well, I was on a paranormal team. It wasn't like that's what happened every day in my life. Uh, <laughs> but actually going out and looking for these things. Because yeah. again, a lot of questions and you want to figure these things out. Well, you were seeking that. So, yeah. yeah. So are you seeking? Are you trying to figure out some answers for the stuff that you've been gifted with? I am. Um, as we, we had a little conversation about it earlier. I mean, I think I've always been a seeker. I think I will continue to seek on my own but I, I actually have felt as of late that I wanted to sort of mm, seek someone out to um, kind of like as a mentor to, to help me hone and, and kind of harness what it is that I am starting to kind of come online with if that makes sense um, I'm loving doing it on my own and it's great and it's really beautiful actually because it's again like I said it's, it's been incremental it hasn't been like overnight but what I do notice is that it's like a, it's a relationship, right? And it's, you're a channel, you're a, um, a conduit, if you will. So you're like a, a radio tower and then it kind of comes through you and out. And uh, so I'm learning to work with that, but I would love to actually sit down with someone who, who kind of knows more about how to harness it, you know, use it um, and, and also protect themselves as well, that kind of thing, so. 
Yeah, it's um, remember Joanna the medium, which is now Joanna the healer. Amazing, amazing. She doesn't. Uh, she'll do some uh, mediumship readings for people, but she is she is um, developed, ascended into more of a healing mm -hmm. modality. She's a massive part of my growth. Like yeah. her and a few others that I watch on YouTube. Um, incredible. Some of the downloads. It's it's amazing. There was a few readings where she'd say. Um, you know, things like, um, are you going to like, you're, you know, you might be experiencing, you know, goosebumps in this moment and, and it just, whoosh, you know, like, and it, or like just downloads that she's, she things she's saying and they've kind of like, oh, we're in a new level here. Like, you know, it's like, it's incredible. Some of the things I've picked up from her. Oh, account. Joanna and Joanna again was one of the mediums we used to have on our, our TV show, our TV show, our old podcast. And she read for me. Yes. And I, I was absolutely impressed with her one of the first readings she had done on the show it was from a guy in michigan who was wanting to know if his father would come through mm. and she said well don't know who this guy is but he's he looks like this and he's saying well it could be wasn't sure and she said he's wearing he's, he's wearing a vest but up on the vest he's he's showing me this vest and he's very very proud of his vest and she was, and she's Polish mm. and grew up in Poland and everything. And she's, you know, Polish Canadian and, and she's, <laughs> she's not an outdoorsy person at all. And um, anyway, he's showing her this vest and on the vest was a little square. And in the square, she said, he's very proud of this little square, but oh, she goes, oh, it's full of bugs. <laughs> it's okay. all sorts of bugs. Okay. And the guy just about loses it. He says, yeah, my dad was a fly fisherman and tied his own flies so she couldn't and i got it that's yeah. what and that's in the parlance is that's being an evidential medium that mm. is showing somebody evidence of the person you're talking to is in fact the person you know that's the identity of the per person yes which is which is a great thing to do but don't get tied up in that once you've got yeah my father was a fly fisherman that definitely is him mm don't say yeah and he's also got a plaid shirt and he's wearing blue jeans right. like as if you say that's yeah enough. you're done you've yeah. identified him what's the message right and she was very good at that going right. through boom id to move on yeah and so if you're out there and you're you're kind of in the be beginning of mediumship being um intuitive and you are getting messages from people and you're you're reading cards and you're trying to identify the person that's coming through once it's once they're identified as yeah that definitely is grandma that's it yeah. you don't have to ask grandma to juggle things or point out where she left right. her purse or something it's right. just move on they're not there for to let the people know that they're around they're there to say hey i got something i gotta tell you and so, i actually really look on. up to people who have that certain gift i personally don't feel like i get specific messages from people i mean i can tell say for example if that's the 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 umbrella of the reading. Okay. So what is this person feeling about you? Right. Um, I can read the language of the cards, but I'm not getting any specific unless I get like an image of something or something like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, this is all very new to me. It's, it's what you're doing is, is you need a focal point. Right. I, on my card reading course that I took, I, one of, one of the people on the card reading course who was also uh, a medium uh, intuitive and she was in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Mm. So Dom, Domi is, Dominique has said, oh, do a reading for me. And I said, I'm going to try something. And I grabbed a whole bunch of business cards mm -hmm. with just the white back, right. back sides. And I said, here, put seven of these down. Okay. And then I flipped them over. And every one I flipped over, I just got something and got something. Yeah. And I get a full reading yeah. by looking at the white business card. Yeah. And she's, well, how can you do that? And I said, I don't know. But I was just told in my head that's what I had to do. Right. And I think it was to show me that it's a focus point, yep. not, it's not the cards, it's the focus right. on them. But some cards have a writing on them. A focus of itself. Yeah. So yeah. those things, I, my cards, the ones that I use primarily are, because I, I did get two sets when I first got them, because someone said, the Archangel Michael's really strong in you. So, mm. okay, whatever that means. So I want, I got the Archangel Michael cards. Right. So I got the Doreen Virtue, Archangel Michael cards. I couldn't read these things. They're well used. They're well used, but they're, Beautiful. they're, um, 
you know, someone would say, okay, James, what do you see when you look at this card? What is it you see? And I would say, well, I see an angel and he's wearing armor. No, what do you see? I see an angel with a blue thing around its head and wearing armor. No, what do you see? I see a friggin' angel with a friggin' like, <laughs> what, what? And they went, oh, okay, never, never mind. Right. So left brain me, boy, sees the picture. I'm not seeing something. Right. So the, the, the psychic that I was learning from had these cards. These are really cool because there's nothing on them. Right. And she said, oh, when you get these cards, other than they're fractals, they, and they come with a book, and all right. the cards have books, and they all mean something. Right. She says, take that wonderful little book and throw it away. Right. So because this picture for Charlene could be totally different reading for somebody else. It's all on the focus that I get, or I'm focusing on the point. Now that's me. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's only me. Tarot cards, whole something different. We're talking Absolutely. Oracle cards. Yes, we're talking. Now you, as you blossomed young lady, yes. you have your own deck. That's right. Well, not just me, myself and uh, three other women who have had a friendship for about Oh, I think 17 years now we've developed this, but there are also some guest speakers in on the deck as well. So there's seven of us who have contributed, but four main women um, is the core group of this, this deck. And uh, we decided to put all of our uh, hard-earned wisdom into this deck. And uh, that's where we came up with all the different cards, the divination of each one of these cards. There it is. <laughs> the uh, Mystical Magical Mirror Reflective Perspective Booklet and Deck. I know it's a big mouthful, but we kind of wanted it to be a little... Um, yeah. I, I felt like, you know, I thought it would be fun. <laughs> well, it's definitely fun. It's yeah. just hard to see. Pass me your deck. Okay. So, they're a lot smaller than this picture. <laughs> yeah. So, they're actually smaller cards. Uh, the Magical... Sorry, the Mystical Magical Mirror Reflective Perspective Booklet and Deck. That's correct. Uh, you said it well. I did after <laughs> three or four times. Um, what turned you in the direction of going out and having your own cards made? Well, um, in the I'd say in the last three, four years along my ascension journey, um, I used to be kind of for lack of a better word, very fond of card readings. And so on YouTube, there's a lot of pick a cards. There's a lot of, you know, Aries and what have you, whatever topic kind of reading. And I kind of got obsessed, <laughs> let's say obsessed. And I was just so fascinated with this, um, this outlet of understanding oneself and how it is that you could look within yourself to see what the energies were around you, surrounding you, what it is that spirit was trying to bring to your attention, that kind of thing. And um, so I became very fond of these and, and uh, like I said, a little obsessed and I didn't, I didn't mean to be, but I think that that's kind of what happens to some people when they first start re uh, experiencing card readers, as if to say, they're always wanting to know, like, like to be prepared, like what's coming, like what, what can I expect? That kind of thing. But little did I know that, I was actually doing what I think we could say now is like homework or I was studying or I was doing research. So not only was I starting to a understand card meanings because I had seen so many readers talk about each individual card, but also I was picking up on my own intuition. Right. Um, so say for example, you have a pick a card and there's like, you know, three, four piles and whatever pile you're drawn to, and then you listen to the reading and that reading resonates with you. Well, something clicks in your mind, like, Oh, wait a minute. I guess my intuition is right. Like, cause how could a reading resonate with you if you didn't pick the right pile? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, no, I didn't know. I didn't know that all that time I was doing research. I was studying, I was <laughs> learning. And so, um, just recently about in March, uh, what are we December? Wow. <laughs> time flies. Um, my mother passed and then of course this worldwide pandemic thing happened and i was just at home and of course watching some readings and i started noticing that a lot of readers were had these like um what looked to be like recipe cards sort of and they were writing um their own you know sayings or what they intuitively picked up and and using these cards that they had made these homemade cards to do readings and and then i woke up one morning and i i I had this one 
sentence in my head and it was a sentence like it was like an inside joke that me and my gr my girlfriends used all the time and it dawned on me like oh yeah you have this list and you've been making this list obsessively writing these sayings down that we share within our group over the years and i had no idea why i was saving them or writing them down for that matter but now of course hindsight um i can see why i was doing it and why i was doing it was because we were meant to make a deck out of them and so i approached one of the four um and she's an artist herself um so i said to her you know wouldn't it be neat if we made a deck just for our group um using our sayings and you could make the artwork and she said Honey, if we're going to do it that way and we're going to put that much work in, we're not just doing it for the four of us. We're going to make this happen. And so we we called the other two and we, you know, talked it out. Did we all feel like it was a good idea? Yes, we did. And then the process started and we it took us two months, not even. It happened so fast. Um, the choosing, we had over 100 sayings that we could use. But where did you grab these saving savings where did you grab these sayings from okay so these are all you know how friends have like within your group of friends and you have sayings of things that have happened movie quotes um you know like little things that you say in and around your group or not just what you guys say but like what's kind of floating out in in society like um you know that's what's up or um asking for a friend or, you know, like what in the actual, like, you know, those are some mainstream ones, but then there's some others that nobody else would understand. And so funnily enough, we noticed that these things all came from, um, it's like hard earned wisdom, like we years and years of being friends and, and using these sayings in certain moments to express a thought that didn't necessarily mean what we were saying, but we knew what it meant. If that makes a sense, if that makes any sense to you, but um, oh, yeah. I could explain like by showing you a certain. You can certainly do that. All right. So yeah, there's like I said, there's four of us, the main group, and then there's seven women in total that have um, contributed to this deck. So let me just see if I can. Um, okay, so let's say we've got things that most people would would. Okay, so for example um set fire to the rain so we know that that's from a popular song that's happened in in years past right um set fire to the rain um hold it a little bit closer camera there oh, okay yeah. there we go As back up see. back Sorry. up so it focus there you go set fire to the rain okay. okay so one of my good girlfriends she would say this when she was really annoyed really annoyed she would just say dude set fire to the rain like like but in a much more aggressive tone <laughs> bless her heart and um what she meant was like this is really confusing this is really frustrating and so what we did was we not only went through like we had literally hundreds that we could use and so we, we went through all of these and started divinating what we thought the meaning should be and so we decided so say for example set fire to the rain it speaks about you're in a confusing or frustrating time, but you need to um, allow yourself to feel those emotions and to not be engulfed by them. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what else could we use? Um, okay. So say, for example, this is another one that not any, not everybody's going to understand. So this actually is a, a catchphrase. What a difference a day makes. It's, it's from a commercial that we heard many years ago, and it was a commercial that used to play in this, um, particular location that we always used to hang out in and uh, it would get stuck in our minds and it, it drove us insane but it ended up meaning to us like basically time needs to pass so like you know sleep on it let a day go by um, and there's like a little jingle in our minds and we get stuck there you know like what a difference a day makes anyway it's a long story but this is what this is where we started oh, the, to no, don't skip this oh, what is this pink jogging pants <laughs> okay pink jogging pants this is a, a funny story so um basically i was hanging out at one of the girls houses and i had shown up to her house and do you want to hold it for you uh, it's okay, okay i think there so. we go 
So I had shown up to her house and I had shown up not prepared and she she lived more in like a kind of country setting. So I had not shown up with anything appropriate to wear. And uh, so she kind of dug through her pile of old clothes and said, oh, you know, I've got something for you to wear while we go on a dog walk. And so she pulls out this pair of jogging pants that was probably from 1987. And we laughed and laughed and laughed because here I am in these jogging pants that are far too short for me. And it was just the longest laugh session we had had as friends. But so what we divinated this card to mean is um, that you are stuck in a rut and that you need to try something new and, uh, you know, get out of this kind of pattern of, um, you know. Get out of the cycle. Yeah, exactly. So as I said, every single card has a different, it, it's a language. It's a language that we, that we made, right? Um, each, but it each. doesn't mean it. Now it doesn't obviously mean that the um, anybody who buys this deck has to learn the lang know the language because you come. It comes with the language book, mm. and each card has a, a a reverse meaning as well. So not only did we divinate upright, also oh, reverse. Oh, it's like the that that nine of spoons or sideways bricks or whatever they all that tarot stuff is. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have no idea, but so it. See if you so if you get the card and it's upside down, it means something different than when it's right side up. Absolutely. See, and my cards, I just yeah, I don't. It's <laughs> well, that's the beauty of each deck, and yeah. and as I said, each so it's it's instead of forty four cards, it's eighty eight. True, true. I mean, each card has its particular like like an umbrella idea. Yeah. And then it's either basically if you're going with it or you're going against it. If that makes sense. Yes. Right. The yin and the yang of your cards. Yeah. So again, some people will understand certain, um, certain. Like I mean, everybody's heard "level up." I mean, who hasn't, right? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I uh, I'll, I'll I'll do the camera thing. Here it comes. <laughs> Level up, right? Is that? Yeah. Right. So as you can see, um, this is an acknowledgement from source, your higher self, whoever you're asking during the reading, uh, basically saying that you know yourself that it's time to level up and that you are to take the steps one at a time to get to that next level, if that makes sense. Yep. So here, I just want to hold this card up just to see what happens with the check. Mark. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it's actually a green check mark on this card. It says, you got this. But being that I have a green screen behind us with the view from my back, the back of my house today, that's why you see birds going by and the clouds moving because it's actually a film taken in the back of the house. I just want to see what the check mark looked like uh, where you could see the clouds behind it. That was kind of cool. That is cool. So you got this. Now, if you've got this, but you get the card upside down, so does that mean you don't have it? Yeah, as if to okay. say, you don't in fact got this and you should probably take a double look before you move on. Um, the nice part is, is that what we did was we designed it. This is the reason why they're called the Mystical Magical Mirror Reflective Perspective deck uh, because every single card is made to look like a mirror okay so oh, okay. we did that on purpose as if to say whatever card that you are receiving is it's as if to say let's take a look inside it is mirroring back to you what is within oh you. that's good reflective perspective you see also completely forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> wait wait Nope, lost it. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a, it's a reflection. It's a reflection of yourself. And uh, if you just, here's the thing. There, I remembered. Sometimes looking within is difficult. Okay, so that's why we made them a little bit funny. I mean, sometimes we need to laugh, right? You, you can't. Oh yeah. You can't always take it so seriously. And I find that a lot of card readers. Or, or oracle cards for that matter. I mean, it is a, it's a, it's a serious matter to look with inside yourself, but um, I think that's why we decided to make some of them a little bit funny. Like for example, this one, don't worry about it. It'll sort itself out, okay? Why is there a broken phone charger on there? Well, there's a story behind that, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, basically one of my girlfriends, there was some alcohol involved. I handed her a phone charger and, and the uh, phone charger had been, you know, taken out of the wall sideways. I handed yeah. it to her, asked her to fix it. Um, she had had a few drinks. I, I left the room. I came back. She handed it to me. It was still in the same way. And she said, don't worry about it. It'll sort itself out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> it was just funny. And so that became a card. And it's basically saying, 
trust, have faith. There is no, you don't need any other, there's no point in worrying. There's no point in putting your focus and energy into that. Put it somewhere else because it will work out regardless for you. So again, uh, things like what in the actual, right? I mean, what in the actual, beep, like, you know, <laughs> we had to make it funny. We had to like, put your tinfoil hat on. What? Like, yeah, you had to make it funny, you know, like, cause if, if not, then sometimes we just take ourselves far too serious and, and it's, um, well, the other thing too, is that I know from, uh, reading cards for people, mm. uh, when someone comes in for a reading and this is, I used to every so often read at a place not too far from where I lived, uh, about half an hour away, they would have me come in when the psychics they had mm. weren't available. And I would read You're like, Thanks. <laughs> and, and like I read, like I, if somebody actually really wants to pay me for a reading, right. I have them go to my Patreon account right. and sign up for $3 a month for a year, which right. is like $37 right. at the store. They were paying $120 for a reading. Right. So and at the beginning, I thought, well, dude, I just learned how to do this. Yeah, yeah. And um, the lady who ran the store said, Denise said, no, no, look, Catherine says you can read. And Catherine is like the teacup medium. She is tea leaf reader, uh, card that. reader. She's the one who told me about, you know, oh, she's the one who had that this deck of cards with all the fractals in it. Right. You know, she, she was a bit of a mentor to me. And I said, well, okay, yeah. I, if she thinks I can do it. And she goes, dude, you read for her and nailed everything. Mm. So you're good to go. Mm. And we need you. <laughs> so I went in and did the readings, but I was still nervous, but the people are like, they're putting out money mm. and they're, this is serious for them. Yeah. Absolutely. So I did also you not feel nervous. At, like, Oh, hell yeah. My I, first few, I, I'm, I almost feel like these people are putting their, 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 faith and trust in me to help them get to some sort of conclusion about their, their quandary, if that makes sense. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the first time I ever went to read cards, a friend of mine, I said, well, how many cards you put down? Mm. Like this, uh, the girl who first read cards for me mm. and pointed all this woo woo stuff out to me that I, I had, she would do a spread of cards face down and then do the pendulum over them right, right. and pick cards out. Um, I asked Catherine, how many cards to put down? She said five. Right. So the very first time I went to put five cards down, what I do is I don't mind if the other person holds cards. I know there's people yeah, I've told me about either. that. Yeah. I say, shuffle them up and put and whatever pattern you want, yep. put seven cards down. And seven came out of my mouth. Right. And you meant to say five, but. And I went, I guess it's got to be seven. Yeah. So the first two cards were what happened a week and a half ago and what happened like three days ago. Right. And then the five cards were all what was coming. Right. So what it, I did that for about a year. Then I had the card reading course just to get more articulate, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> about, articulate. Uh, about reading cards right. and, and, and be able to communicate things that I may run into that might've been negative, but I, I honestly don't get negative stuff from cards. Those people go somewhere else. I don't get them. Mm. So Neither do I. the, um, she said that, uh, no, oh, where was I going with that? Sorry. Oh, she, I, I don't, I mean, Catherine came in she, because the person putting on the course thought they'd sneak in a bunch of psychics mm. as victims of our, our junior card readings. <laughs> uh, Catherine walks in and I look at her and she looks at me and I said, come here yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to read cards for you. As soon as I put the seven down, mm. I realized why I picked seven. It was a confidence thing because what I told them what happened in the past mm. and, and I don't mean, 10 years ago, I mean, last week and a half, right. specific things. They look at me like, how do you know that? And then it, the confidence came. And then everything I got from the next five cards, I didn't question it in my head. Exactly. It just went boom, boom, right through. And I think this is going back to speaking about how spirit kind of affects everybody differently, like shows you your gifts differently, that kind of thing. So what I've noticed with me is that not only am I using my, my group's friendship language we'll call it right yeah. but i'm also it's as if to say spirit uses me as a channel um in the way of knowing that because i have experienced a lot in my life that i'll be able to come from an angle of a understanding b compassion and c using all of that experience to 
add to the cards as I speak to the person. So I have a very good way of, um, oh, I don't know. I can, I can, I've been, I've been told I'm eloquent when I speak. I, I have a very good way of describing things. I think it comes from quite possibly having deaf parents and needing to, um, really explain things in detail expressively explain absolutely things, right yeah. and so that's where i think my gift comes in in the way of that's how i affect people it's like a soft um it's like a like a, a word hug <laughs> if you will does that make sense? A big word hug yeah the word hug comes to mind right so this is out of focus but it is the magical no mystical. sorry the mystical <laughs> why did you put mystical first the mystical magical mirror reflective perspective booklet and deck, which includes the uh, 54 page booklet and a bar of gold. Yes, it was hard to read. I wasn't sure if it was a bar of gold. No, 44 <laughs> colorful Vibrantly guy. colorful. Vibrantly <laughs> colorful. God. It was a bar of gold. Yes. You might get lucky and get a bar of we gold. We like that. that there, there's a golden guild around the edges. It's quite uh, Oh, yes. Shiny. Nice. Uh, man, mine's worn off. Um, you've, you've got these for sale. You, if you go to your um instagram, instagram mm -hmm. the reflective perspective oracle and uh, it'll take you to where you could snag those now it's etsy or et how do you say that etsy etsy no um so just for now you would either message myself uh reflective perspective oracle through uh instagram dm me and we can totally discuss that they're 50 dollars canadian per deck um also you can contact the witches in she also has a surplus of her like the exact same deck obviously yeah. she's a part of the, yeah. the group and uh she could also send them to you as well so either myself or her and we can get them and the witch is in is the witch is in 13. Mm -hmm. the witch the witch is in 13. where's the witch she's in 13. she's in there uh reflective perspective oracle is uh charlene and this is her deck and it's very very cool and we have them kicking around the house mm -hmm. so uh because uh, my tenant has them and is flogging them around all the time and uh, they seem to work quite well and you do readings too i do um so on my page uh every second day i do a random pick a card whether that be just general advice um what is your romantic partner thinking of you what does your higher self want you to know that kind of thing. And then every off day, I do a card of the day for the collective. So uh, it's a general energy that's floating around the collective because we are coming into a very unity consciousness as of late in the, in our world. So yes, that that's kind of an important part of what's going on in, in the, in the global community right now is that fifth dimension it's event. A, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to get yeah. rid of the third dimension ego service to self service to self we're building our nest a, we're we, moving into a, a space of service to others and it's and, yes. and it's beautiful and boundaries and and respecting those and understanding the differences between us and someone else but still respecting that and loving them unconditionally regardless it's about time because so. the way things are going like if you turn on the news it's like what the hell is going on uh yeah ego like we built the wall around our house our i always say the house the town the state the, the country, country. Mm -hmm. nobody come in here this is mine 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 this mm -hmm. is all mine you can't have it because i am i and i do i things mm -hmm. it's like dude relax but if well you you are i and i i am you and we are all together. Absolutely. Cuckoo, could you hold on? <laughs> I am the walrus. Cuckoo, could you? Yeah, I am the walrus. Well, that that actually is um, a line in a in a John Lennon song. No, I know. Okay, fine. It's like I, <laughs> young people. I'm not really sure. No, it's I, like she probably listens to that hippity hop stuff, and I. Uh, uh, well. Um, yeah. Okay, fine. I like all things. I like all things. Mm -hmm. I don't like beets, and I don't like peas. <laughs> No rice pudding. No rice pudding. Right. How about tapioca pudding? No. Nope. Yeah, it's like it's weird. Have some bubble tea. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like I, it's, there's fish eggs in here. How did we get here? I don't know. But it's, <laughs> how did we get here? Well, when a man loves a woman, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, they both love each other because that's just pretty um, one-sided. Yeah, pretty uh, unity consciousness. Guy. Okay. <laughs> that's that's old school Neanderthal. <laughs> 
B club girl I had in mm. Mary Take Two Cave. Mm. Why do I sound like Tonto from the Lone Ranger? <laughs> I don't know. I, Tonto was actually an Anderson. No. Tonto was a smart one. That's just kind of funny. Um, how did we get? Yeah, how do we get there? Uh, so, where are you going next with like in your travels? Do you have a? Have you charted a course at this point? A physical trail, or are we just speaking like? No, metaphysically. Goal, like, where are you? What are your goals? By the way, that's one of our cards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are your goals? Well. Um, Right now, I am working on the Instagram page. I'm also working on my own uh, YouTube channel, and um, it's it's slower than the IG channel, but I'm again I'm working on it, and uh, I'm hoping to just you know do some readings. I I think again service to 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 others, and I I love helping. I it's my thing. I it, I've it's I found my purpose, if you will, and that is to help others and do it with a very loving and compassionate um, voice. And um, that's what I want to do. So I'd love to do readings. I'd love to, um, you know, and not just share readings, but share my ideals and, and help um, the collective ascend higher to um, a more higher state of unity. We cannot be an ocean without a little drop. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And every time I do a reading, every time I, you know, plant a seed, another one of our cards, um, it, it affects everything. And it's that you throw that pebble and it, it ripples. Plant a seed. That is actually one of the, remember I was telling you when I, I saw hand signals, mm -hmm. when I see the person standing, they get hand signals on path. Right. Got to break, break something we still don't get. But what was the other one was they were wearing a, uh, a satchel with seeds in it doing this ah that was one of the other things right that um i, like I saw that. so it's like you look at somebody and say oh yeah your grandmother your grandfather says that you're 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 out sowing your own so well no not sowing your oats that's uh okay look at another it. term for <laughs> i know but i meant like, yeah no you're out doing like, exactly what you're you are basically seeds. in in an hour an hour parlance and on the way we deal with things if I look at you and I say, oh, you're right, you are on path, you are to be. And what that is, is pointing out to somebody else who they are. Right. And, and whether that seed hits them on the top of the head and germinates today or tomorrow and 20 years from now, at least the seed was dropped. Mm -hmm. That's all you had to do, turn around and walk away. Right. And you can lead the horse to water, right? But yeah. They have to water it. They have to drink it. They have to do all the nurturing and love and care in order to get to that. And that's what I was saying in the beginning of this entire reading was that I've, I feel like it's all synchronistic in the sense that I've always been guided to the people that planted, that kept planting the seeds along my path to go wake up wake up wake up see it pay attention wake up like we're we're talking to you you know and it just it's it, it grew time. from there so i want to go to your youtube page here oh okay my that's goodness. why i pulled up it's for for those of you watching this on the video and saw me pull out my phone it's not <laughs> that i'm checking the time or my box scores or my uh okay stupid i just wanted to what? that's okay okay no. it's, we're good <laughs> it's yeah it's what uh it's we're crazy people date <laughs> young kids these days <laughs> young kids you young hippies um yeah what what is your youtube thing because i'm gonna prescribe to it oh uh fully charm kind of life and i think you meant subscribe to it <laughs> i i did but i always say prescribe young kids <laughs> young, really young. fully charged no fully charmed charm kind of life I'll so it's kind of a play on the, I don't know if you remember the song years ago, and it was called Semi-Charm Kind of Life. But instead of semi, I decided to say fully because who wants a semi-charm kind of life? Why not have a full one? <laughs> okay, so you only have 11 subscribers. Oh gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Six, don't say this. Six videos yeah. because you're just beginning. Yes. She is just beginning. It's just beginning. And so I've hit the prescribe button. Okay. You now have 12 prescribers. Okay. Thank and, you. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, look, you have like you're doing readings. You've got the really cool backgrounds. And uh, that is really cool. And yeah. people could, people obviously get a hold of you on here, right? Yes. I, I'm not sure on how all YouTube reading works, prices. So. And it's all in the, in the description box under each reading. So, my that email's really cool. there, different pricing, that kind of thing. So, feel free to shoot me a message.
please shoot her a message so she knows at least one person watched this <laughs> or listen to it, depending on where you are. Because the, um, the, the video of this actually goes out to all the Patreon subscribers first, and the audio goes out to everyone else who finds a podcast in the podcast universe from iTunes to Spotify to iHeartRadio or wherever you can get a podcast. But the video won't make it to my YouTube channel for about a month because it's for the Patreon subscribers first. They get uh, first right of refusal on the video part. And uh, we go from there. But uh, th this has been Charlene. She's a reflective perspective oracle. And you can find her on Instagram. Um, I can find her sometimes kicking around here. We made uh, turkey chili tonight. Oh, it was good. Because of the good um, chef, by the way, the bizarre event of not being able to record this, the first interview. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody who, do, who have tuned in and who are watching the video portion of this because this is new to me doing the uh, videos. I may start doing some live streams with the two mediums and a large. So stay tuned. Uh, kind of keep an eye out on that on uh, the Oracles of James Tyson on Instagram and on Facebook and we'll announce things like that where we'll get a live stream going as soon as I find a good live stream platform. I wonder if, is that Facebook? Do they do live stream? Some people do. Some people do. And YouTube as well. YouTube? Oh yeah, I'll just stick to the YouTube thing. Hmm. Yeah, because that's kind of fun. And I may be able to do that with my varying camera setups. And uh, yeah, we didn't get a reading done, which is good. Uh, what, would you like me? To no, read? no, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> we could pull one card. No, no, I'm good. Thank okay, you we're good. Much. We're good. I'm good. Well, we'll do that. Uh, you know, I hate to find out that I'm losing a leg or something tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but you don't get that either. Like, I don't get people people that that come into our our reading umbrella. Mm. We don't get the people who are getting hit by a bus or falling out of a plane the next day without a parachute. No, we it's... get people who are dealing with a like a on a heart-based kind of yeah. issue yeah. or i get the ones that are about to awaken right yeah that whole i think i see ghosts but i'm not really yeah you do yeah or there's this bright light that comes in my bedroom sometimes and i find myself flying and i went yeah you gotta leave no because <laughs> uh, i do I, like this is a, i do go to the alien conferences and i do meet people who have are really cool experiences and are freaking out, which then I send them over to Skeeter who does the whole regression because I don't do that. Mm. Cause uh, yeah, I kind of stay away from the alien stuff. Mm. Yeah. I saw them in Sedona. That was interesting. So I'm seeing UFOs with, yeah, that was, uh, that was really cool. Oh, so I can imagine yeah, you have a little night vision on and you're watching them flying going. So this is a UFO tour. We actually pay for this and you provide us with UFOs. Now you're cool. Yeah, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah, a lot of fun. Again, thank you very much, Charlene, thank for coming up. Thank you for out. having me. I super appreciate this. It's been a lot of fun. Well, and I'm sorry we had to do it twice, but you know. Yeah, at least we got better at it the second time. Two things came out, like you know, different things, different times, but yeah, we got it done. We had our first interview that we did today that didn't record was way better than this one. Yeah. <laughs> we hit different avenues. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. That's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out here.